All right then, so in the last lesson we made our first two mutations, one to add a game and one to delete a game. And for adding a game, we made this add game input where we collated two fields together. So that could be our variable right here, just this one variable called game, which has this kind of structure. So we're gonna do one more mutation now, and that is gonna be for editing a game. So I'm gonna come down to the bottom and I will make a new one called update game, like so. Now in here, we need some arguments. Now, what do we need? We need the ID of the game that we want to update. And we didn't need an ID here, remember, because we're adding a new game that doesn't have an ID yet. But when we're updating existing data, we need the ID of the game that we want to update. So let's put that in. But we also need any kind of edits that we want to make, all right? So what I'm gonna do is make another argument called edits. And for this, I'm gonna create a new input. So let me copy this and paste it down here. And I'm gonna call this edit game input. And then we'll set that here, edit game input like so. And we're not gonna make this, yeah, in fact, we will make this required. Okay, and this is gonna return game. Now, these things right here, these two fields, they are the same. So you might be thinking, well, why didn't we just reuse this one here? And the difference is that I'm not gonna make these two required. Because if you go to update a game, you might just want to update one of the fields like title. So I don't want to make therefore the platform required if you don't want to update that. And likewise, if you just update the platform, you might not want to update the title. So therefore I don't want to make this required. So if I reuse this, we would have to basically update both of the fields in order for this to work. But I don't want to make a user do that. So by making a new one where they're not required, it's a bit more flexible. And also I'm not putting the ID in here like so. And instead I'm specifying it here. And the reason for that is because it's not really an edit, is it? So I don't want to group the ID into some kind of edits object. I'd like that to be its own separate argument. So let me delete that, save it. And now we can create a resolver function for this update game mutation. All right then, so let's add this in down here, update game like so and we don't need the first argument the parent but we do need the args because the edits and also the id are going to be on that and then down here what i'm going to do is just paste in a bit of code and this is what we're using to basically update the games array so we're taking the games on db and we're setting it equal to db.games.map so we're mapping through the array and basically creating a new array out of it so we fire a function for each item in the array and for each item we check does that particular game that we're currently iterating have an ID that is equal to the ID on the arguments? Because remember, we're gonna have an ID property on this right here. And if it does match, then we're gonna return this thing right here, G, so the current object, if you like, and spread those. So whatever properties it currently has, we're adding right here. And then we're also spreading args.edits. So if, for example, we update the title, then it's gonna override the title that's over here that we're spreading. Does that make sense? So that's the returned object right here, and that's gonna go inside the array then. If these don't match, then we don't need to change it, and we just return the original object to the array. So I hope that all makes sense. Now, at the end of this update game mutation, we need to return something back to the user. So if we take a look at the schema, we return the game that we just edited. So we shall say return, and then we'll say db.games.find to find a particular game. And we can cycle through those. And we want to return the game where the ID is equal to args.id. Because again, remember, we have the ID argument right here. Okay? Cool. So now we have that mutation. Let's try it out. Okay, then. So back over here, I'm going to create a new tab. And I'm going to copy this mutation, which is for adding a game. I'm gonna paste it over here, and then I will call this edit mutation. And this right here needs to be edit game input. And this is called edits. This and this right here is edits and dollar sign edits. But also remember, we need to pass in the ID. So we can say the ID is equal to, oops, we need dollar sign first of all. ID is of ID type, like so. We need the ID right here. So let's say the ID is the ID variable. Awesome. 
Okay, this is not ad game, it's update game, like so. And we don't pass in the ID. We can pass in a title and a platform. Well, mind you, these are what we're going to get back. So we can pass in the ID here if we want to. For the variables, let's copy this again. Because it's going to be very similar. And paste it right here. So we're going to have an edits property. And we also need an ID property. So let's do the ID down here. Oops. Done that incorrectly, comma here, and then ID. We'll set that equal to two, and we'll change this to, I don't know, Dark Souls, like so. And then we don't need to pass in an update for this. So let's just do that. So then we're gonna get these fields back. So what we're doing is we're passing in the edits right here, of which we just have one, the title, and then the ID of the game we want to edit. So we're passing both of those in here, and then we're using those inside this mutation, and we're saying, look, once you've made this mutation, this edit, send back the game and give us the title and platform. So the title should be updated now. So let's do that. And we can see now the title is Dark Souls. The platform is unchanged. If I change instead the platform, and this needs to be an array of strings now, doesn't it? And we'll just change this to be, I don't know, um, Xbox, whatever. Let's edit that again. And now it's just Xbox. I can change this now to PS5 if I wanted to. And we'll do Switch as well. And also, if we wanted to change the title as well, we can do. So we'll just say, I don't know, some other game. Can't think off the top of my head. Edit. And we can see now we've made those edits. Awesome. All right then gang, so that's pretty much it for this series then. I really hope you enjoyed it and hopefully you feel comfortable now with the basics of GraphQL in terms of making a GraphQL server, but also in terms of the query syntax and actually making queries from the front end. And uh, if not, then I guess thanks anyway for wasting the last two hours of your life watching my videos. But yeah, hopefully not and fingers crossed it wasn't a complete waste of time. But anyway, in the future, I will do more courses to incorporate GraphQL, like how to use GraphQL in a Next.js site or maybe with Superbase or something like that. And that's one of the main reasons I wanted to make this course right here so that it serves as a jumping in point to learn the basics of GraphQL quickly so we can do more advanced stuff in the future. So then my friends, I really, really hope you enjoyed this series and you learned something along the way. If you did, please, please, please don't forget to share, subscribe and like. That really means a lot. And if you want to access all of my YouTube courses without adverts, also get access to premium courses and early access courses as well, you can do at netninja.dev. You can sign up for NetNinja Pro, which is just $9 a month and also half price for the first month with this promo code right here. And for that, like I said, you get access to every course without adverts, without YouTube adverts. You also get access to exclusive courses not found anywhere else. You get access to my premium courses on Udemy and also early access to all of my YouTube courses as well. So the link to this page to sign up is going to be down below. Again, I really hope you enjoyed this series and I'm going to see you in the very next one.